In just hours, an appeals court will hear arguments on the potential future of the Michael Flynn case, despite the DOJ dropping the charges against the former national security advisor. Right, so trial judge Emmett Sullivan suspects department corruption and House Democrats say there's overt political bias. But what about the apparent FBI bias at the center of this case? Former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi joins us now with her expertise. Pam, I'm so glad that you're uh, here right now because this is getting very confusing with multiple judges now weighing in. So explain what's happening today with these oral arguments and why it's so important to Michael Flynn's ultimate fate. Sure, Carly, and you're right. I think for people who aren't lawyers, it is very confusing because this should have never happened. We should never be in this position. So in our government, we have three very distinct branches of government. Legislative, they make the laws, the judges who act as umpires, and the executive branch, which, which consists of the prosecutors and the defense attorneys. Here, we have the Department of Justice at the very top level saying, we do not want to prosecute this defendant anymore. This this case should be thrown out. Um, they've used all kinds of bad ways to prosecute him. And of course, the defense is in full agreement. So the prosecutors have said, and what you said about the FBI is so true. There are major questions with the FBI. They came in and they set up General Flynn. We all know that. They came in during transition, and then Comey struck Page. They had a plan, and Comey basically bragged about it, as we all know, to go after General Flynn. There was no reason in the world to go after this man other than they wanted to set him up and trap him and have him lie. They came into the West Wing of the White House, President Trump's first week in office, caught General Flynn completely off guard. First of all, it should have been thrown out when they said, oh, no, you don't need an attorney. Crazy what they did. They didn't get anything. So what did they do? They kept going. They kept pushing. They basically threatened him with going after his own son. So what did General Flynn do? He entered a guilty plea. Now that all this has come to light, all the missteps is an understatement. Basically, I believe criminal actions on the part of the FBI at the very highest level. The De Department of Justice rightfully so has said, this case needs to be thrown out. Prosecutor, defense attorney, in full agreement. Then what happens? The judge, Judge Sullivan, decides, I don't want this case thrown out. He is the reason why we have separation of powers, where a judge cannot come in and act as a prosecutor. Who's going to prosecute the case? The highest levels of the Department of Justice say, we don't believe a crime is committed here. Defense attorney, full agreement. So now, unprecedented, it has gone to an appellate court, so the judge has to basically show cause why he is refusing to let the, de the defense and the state, the prosecutors, drop the case against General Flynn, who has been, in my opinion, persecuted long enough. So, Carly, that's what's happening today. An appellate court is going to hear from this judge. So now the judge has come in and basically appointed another retired judge <laughs> who shares his liberal political views on the case to argue the case on his behalf, wow. which this is crazy. A judge should not be acting in the role of a prosecutor ever. Wow. Yeah. Pam, right. that was an amazing law school bar review summary. <laughs> really you should was. really do that for a living. Um, I, I would even go so far as to say that you said, like, lawyers don't e lawyers understand this. I, I, most lawyers have never seen a situation like this, and I I've think that that bears it. repeating, adding to, a, yeah, right, adding to a lot of the confusion. Let's go back to the whole crossfire hurricane process. Yes. Uh, we have some subpoenas that were issued, and there are a lot of Obama-era officials on this list. Not going to go through them all, but you can see them there on your screen. Yeah. As briefly as you can, because we're running out of time, walk us through sure. how the subpoena process will work and if at the end of the day, these individuals will have to give testimony. Well, yes, they will, because we have a majority in the Senate, um, and we've got Lindsey Graham at the helm. Lin Lindsey's a former prosecutor. Lindsey's a great lawyer, and so many great senators, and yes, and this, we've got to flush through this. This is so important, because the FBI, they are our top premier law enforcement agency in the country, and Todd, we all know 99% of these FBI agents are great. They're out there risking their lives for us every single day, and it's a shame when the very top of the FBI struck page comey the very top they're out there doing these things trying to set up a three-star general a three-star general iraqi freedom enduring freedom 
General Flynn did not deserve this. He was collateral damage right. for being a supporter of the President of the United States and the head of NSA. And so that's what happened. And so we've got to get to the bottom of this because we have got to get these bad FBI agents out of there. So, yes, Lindsey Graham has given his list. They're going to subpoena all of these people to come into the U.S. Senate. I sat there during impeachment proceedings when the Democrats tried to go after right, President Trump. Right. And, and now we've got a legitimate case against them, and I can't wait to hear what they're going to say under oath. I have a feeling, by the way, most of them are going to take the fifth. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. And that's sort of telling in and of itself. Uh, Pam, we got to run, but thank you right so much on. for breaking it down. We appreciate it.